So we're done our uh, ridge reaming now. So as Mitchell showed before, there, there's a lot of, I'm gonna call it paste, metal dust mixed with PB blaster that's all down all the cylinders and on the crankshaft. This is not the way I would recommend doing this because now we have to try and flush all of that out of there because even a tiny little metal particle in the new connecting rod bearings is gonna cause a problem. So realistically, it probably would have been best to have like a big wadded up cloth in the bottom of the cylinder and then probably pull it straight out the top. But you know, we don't have a lot of resources here right now. So what I did before we started though, is I turned it at least so that the oil pressure holes in the connecting rod journals weren't at least filling with metal shavings. And what we'll do is put fresh oil in this when we get it all back together, run it for like, you know, maybe half an hour at most, probably less, and dump it again right away to try and get anything else that's in there out. If the oil pump sucks up that stuff, not gonna be good either. So I'm just gonna use P, uh, this is PD, WD-40, which is our water displacement as well to keep these from rusting until we get to the point of honing. Um, and I'm just gonna try and flush it down onto the ground on top of everything else that's down there. So we'll do that and then we're gonna move on to checking the uh, crankshaft connecting rod journals to make sure that the new bearings that we've got will actually do something. So we were going to use the micrometer and check the connecting rod journal on the crankshaft, but after a quick realization that it doesn't matter because there's nothing we can do about it if they're too small anyways, other than um, possibly grind the uh, bottom caps for the connecting rod bearings to make it a closer tolerance, but we can't do that here. And that process involves using plastic gauge, which we also don't have any of, but you put a piece in and you torque it up to spec and then you take it out and you measure how much the plastic gauge squished and that tells you what your clearance is. And then you have to go to a surface grinder or a milling machine and take a half a thousandth of an inch off of the bearing cap and try it again. So we don't have any machine here to do that. I mean, eventually we might, but as long as there isn't huge slopping happening, with the connecting rod to the crankshaft, not worried about it. It might have a little bit of a knock in it when we're done, but not a whole lot we can do about it. We're gonna put new bearings in, so there shouldn't be a whole lot of play. And as long as when we torque up the bearing caps on the rods, it doesn't prevent the crankshaft from turning and everything still is smooth, then we should be good to go. So I think we're just gonna kinda of ignore that for now. Um, and instead we'll shift our focus to putting the newly machined knurled pistons back on the connecting rods. We're gonna actually tank everything in Varsol first and rinse it with brake clean um, and get that all assembled. We got new piston rings that are hopefully right. I haven't actually checked them. New piston rings to put on, so we'll get the, all the pistons and connecting rods and, and everything, the rod bearings, all ready to go. And then after that, um, we can actually hone the cylinders, which we'll show you that, that tool when we get to that point but we'll make sure they're as good, of a, as good of a seal as we can get to get the best compression and clean up the... <laughs> Wait, noise! <laughs> yeah, so uh, yeah, we'll try and get nice cross hatching going in the cylinders to get good compression seal. Uh, clean up the crankshaft of all the metal shavings that we just dumped into it from uh, bridge reaming. And then we can put the whole bottom end back together, put the oil pump pickup back on, put the oil pan gasket back on, and then we're just gonna coat the thing in oil and leave it while we fight with getting the cylinder head rebuilt. And then we should be able to actually put it back together. So I guess let's get into some parts washing here, which isn't super exciting, but Mitchell will film some of it and we'll probably do some as a time lapse. And then we'll get into actually reassembling pistons and new rings and stuff. We are going to use Varsol, or in this case, it's just called solvent 
same thing, bar salt, uh, cleaning solvent uh, dissolves grease and rust and oil and whatever else. Uh, so we're just going to put all of the pistons and connecting rods and bearing caps and all that stuff through a quick bath of Varsol, then rinse it with brake clean, then use compressed air to dry it off so that we can assemble them um, clean and fresh with some new oil. And that's about it. This stuff is poisonous and flammable, so don't eat it, don't get it in your eyes. Then we're just going to go through and take all the oil, film, and any residue and hopefully carbon buildup off of all the pistons here with the brush and the bar saw. And then uh, we'll go out and rinse them with brake clean and air dry them with the compressed air. And then they'll be ready to go. Yeah, camera's live right there. Okay. I hope so. It's going to be good out so good. Probably break the bank. Yeah. Likely. I guess there is some carbon down the bottom there, but nothing like what was being described to me. So now we'll take that outside and do a little rinsey rinsey. You need the drape. Yeah, in case it you can't get hair or something like that. So basically all we did here was that we used the brake clean there and we sprayed the part that we were cleaning. Uh, we sprayed it with a fair amount of brake clean, not like, you know, a huge amount, but enough so that you would basically wash the Varsol off. And then using the compressed air that was beside us, then we would spray the part. In this case, what you're seeing here is a piston and we would spray it with the compressed air uh, to dry it off. Um, because of the extreme winds this day we didn't even try to explain it as we went here because we figured that the microphone wouldn't pick anything up and uh it turned out to be kind of true the the wind resistance sock that we have on our new microphone did help but uh yeah the extreme winds were nuts that day
here shortly with more. In case it's never been mentioned before, we're working in the worst possible conditions you would want to be trying to rebuild an engine. No real, I mean this is better than outside, but no real proper shop space. The equipment is spread far and thin. I do have everything that we need to do it properly, but having it all in one place is nearly impossible. There's no power out here, so we're constantly fighting with uh, power packs to run lights. And the batteries are, both of them are dead now today. Could run the generator, but it's a hurricane outside, so, you know, life goes on. So we got all of our connecting rods and pistons laid out in some kind of order here. And I've just got some, I'm not a fan of Castrol, but I've just got some Castrol GTX 10W30, just because you don't want to put any of this together dry. And of course it'll be a lot easier with some oil on it and it won't rust if you have it out in a humid climate. We brought all these pieces into the dry basement until they're actually ready to be assembled onto the tractor so we don't have to clean all the rust off of them. So I'm just gonna put some of this in here to work from. which if we were filming this at my house, that basement is not dry, in which case that is not the place you'd want to take them. <laughs> <coughs> yeah. So we're just going to get the pistons back on the rods is really all we're focusing on here. And I just put all of the, I'm assuming you can see this. I just put all of the, yeah. I just put all of the caps back on the rods in the correct direction and the nuts back where they were. And when we're actually ready to put the connecting rod and piston assemblies back in the tractor then those will come off we'll put the new connecting rod bearings in there with oil as well so it's not dry even though those bearings don't turn in here you don't want it to be dry necessarily I believe I'll double check that depends on the engine sometimes uh, and then we also have new piston rings that we will try to put all together here we'll see how that goes the idea with any engine rebuild of course would be to do it in a sterile climate environment but we don't have any such luxury usually. So we're going to do the best we can. But at the very least, yeah, a dry climate so that when you do actually clean the oil film off of engine components, they don't start to rust right away. So let's just start anything logically with number one here. front and this is to the right so it goes that way the pin piston pin bushings look pretty good in the rods there is a little tiny bit of Play, but for what we're building, we don't care. We're not building a high performance racing engine. Let's get the rest on it already. So, not a big deal. That goes to the right. So, what I'd like to do. You want to oil the inside? If you want to hold that, actually, you shouldn't get dirty. Just hold that. You can hold it down closer to the bottom if you want as well. That's going to go that way. This is going to go this way. So what I'll start by doing, I gotta figure out which finger I'm gonna use for this. Start by just putting some oil 
on the piston part of this. And we'll put some, without getting Mitchell covered. Oops. <laughs> I tried. I tried. Fail. I tried my best. Epically. And, and then we'll do. There is actually, if you're doing a fresh engine rebuild, there is actually what they call assembly lube, which is just a different kind of oil, but it's intended for putting together a new or newly rebuilt engine. Now you can tell right away I should have got a hammer first, because it's not going to be nice as per typical. And a plastic, or it's kind of rubber, Basically a plastic or a brass mallet is what you want for this. You do not want to use a ball peen, a steel ball peen hammer. You're just gonna risk mashing stuff. Um, and what we can also do before we go, I should have got it, I already got that. What we can also do before we go trying to put the piston pin in is put one of the clips in. So the pin will go against the clip and we don't have to fight it afterwards. So let's put one of these. And on most of these, I don't know if you might be able to see that or not. Maybe, oh, there we go, kind of. So on some of these, there's a, a wear mark on the clip where the actual pin would run. This one's got a fairly substantial groove. So I'm gonna turn those ones around so that we have a fresh, true surface to go against the pin. And this should just be as easy as ABC. Do you remember, sir, when we took these apart, where was the, where were the forks of the... I think I'm gonna remember that. That was like six months ago. <laughs> Not six months ago, it was more like it three or four. Shouldn't matter, but I like to try and put things back the same way they were. All right, let's try this again. Actually, I guess we're ready to just keep going. I guess I could get it. This is not going to be, hmm. this is not going to be good. Uh, let's lay it down. Just try and line up. Can you see in there at all? Yeah, it should be good. That was easy. <laughs> Where's the staples button? <laughs> so laying it down is the way to do it. Well, and I mean, Try and keep it on a clean surface is why we're using cardboard, but also like um, like a vice. Is, oops, that was easy. Super easy. Once it's in there, it should be easy. That makes perfect sense to me. But where's the groove on this one? Like that. So obviously, if you were doing like a full everything rebuilt, rebuilt, everything rebuilt, everything rebuilt, rebuilt, you probably have new. Clips. Uh, if you, well, yeah, if you got new, if you got new pistons and new piston pins and all that jazz, then yeah, you'd probably get new clips with it, anyways. So yeah, that would make that would make logical sense. Very interesting. Anyway, there is numbers to the right dot to the front. You're gonna have to point it down for them to see it. I don't know if they're gonna be able to see it anyways, but number stamped in the right hand side with the engine being that way forward. And the dots that I added to num to number them go to the front of the tractor. And it does say standard STD um, red from the right hand side of the tractor towards the front. So that one is correct. So we're just gonna do the same thing with the rest of them here now. And then 
basically what we'll do is probably like bag them up so that they don't get covered in dust and they won't rust down here in the basement for now. There we go. All right, well, it's pretty much five. You want to pack it up with that? Sure. I don't know if Greg's going to do piston rings on his own here or not, but... No, probably not today. I need to get going back to Kitchener, but uh, that's the next step on these, at least, is to just take a quick, like a quick uh, scraper or a pick and just gently go around all the... These are, I believe they're aluminum. It's kind of weird. Maybe the outside is aluminum, the inside is steel, because... Mm, well, maybe not. No, certainly, that's definitely aluminum, you can tell. But in any case, we don't want to take extra metal off of the grooves. They're probably already worn enough as it is, but they have to be perfectly clean and free so the piston rings can float and move in and out, no problem. So that's the next step, though. We've got new rings. I haven't checked. Maybe that's something we can do before we end off here is actually open one and make sure it's actually the right rings, both size and type. Ow. So just... just you don't even have to take it off of there, just pop it open. Okay. <laughs> we'll just, for sake of news, we'll just do this. Ooh, they're even supposed to be in the tray. Those look awfully small for what we need. Are they supposed to be small though? Nice. Nice. Gold plated. That's the oil ring and the two spring rings that go around it in the oil groove. And then we've got one for each of the three. I guess they were air right. Okay, cool. Alright, so in the next episode, you're going to see that. In the next episode, you see me. Try and flow, maybe us, depending on what it is. See us try and put these piston rings in without launching them across the room or deforming them or breaking them or or going into one of our eyes. Any of the above. Because they don't really have a lot of they don't have a lot of give and you're supposed to be able to spread them wide enough to go over without deforming them so they still do their job. So yeah, stay tuned for more fun. So if you like this video, please drop that like button. Hit subscribe leave and a, definitely leave a comment. Leave a if comment you if you have concerns, concerns. Or questions. We welcome it all. Questions about why we're doing certain things or why we're not doing certain things. Maybe I forgot. You never know. So yeah, by all means, drop a comment and uh, hit that bell so that when we release a new video on this stuff, you'll get a notification and you won't miss it. Of course, check out our channel. We cover lots of various cars and stuff. And as we get bigger, there'll be even more interesting, different things that we'll be covering here on the channel. Yep. Greg wants a transport truck. <laughs> I want lots of things. Anyway, we'll see you in the next one. Peace.